All right, so our target for today is to construct an experimental data to achieve a chemistry which whether a reaction will occur. How do chemists predict which metal reactions? They use the activity. You can find this activity series in the back of your periodic table around 8 o'clock. It is basically a list of different metals and how good looking they are. The higher they are on that chart, the better looking they are. The more likely they're going to be to give away electrons. The lower they are on that chart, the uglier they are. The less likely they're going to be to give away their electrons. I was working in the lab late one night and my eyes beheld an eerie sight For my monster from his slab began to rise And suddenly, to my surprise He did the mash He did the monster mash The monster mash It was a graveyard smash He did the mash He caught on in a flash He did the mash he did the monster match To my love notari in the castle east To the master bedroom where the vampires feast The ghouls all came from their humble abodes To catch a jolt from my electrode They did the match They did the monster match The monster match It was a graveyard smash They did the match It caught on in a flash They did the match He did the monster match Zombies were having fun. In a shoe bar. The party had just begun. In a shoe bar. The guests included Wolf, in a shoe bar. Dracula, and his son. The scene was rocking, though we're digging the sounds. He got on chains backed by his baying hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive. With their vocal group, the Crypt Kicker Five. They played the monster mash. The monster mash. And it was a graveyard smash. They played the mash. It's caught on in a flash. They played the mash. They played the monster mash. Out from his coffin, Drax's voice did ring. Seems he was troubled by just one thing. Opened the lid and shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. The monster mash. It's now a graveyard smash. It's now the mash. It's caught on in a flash. It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. Now everything's cool, Drax a part of the band. And my monster mash is the hit of the land. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. When you get to my door, tell them Boris sent. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. And do my graveyard smash. Then you can mash. And you'll catch on with a flash. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. Wow. Uh, mash fool! Wow. Easy, God, you impetuous young boy. Uh, mash fool! One of the great mysteries in chemistry. So what happens when an elemental metal comes in contact with a different metal that has become a cation? All right. Here's the situation. You've got copper plus two. Copper plus two is happy. Why is it happy? Because it has lost two electrons. If it comes in contact with iron, something may or may not occur. Okay, iron has a charge of zero. That means it has two electrons. It hates those two electrons. Metals all tend to hate their outer shell electrons. They want to get rid of them. They can't stand them. So iron comes over to copper and says, hey, copper, I notice that you don't have any electrons. I love these two electrons. I really do. Yay. But I would love for you to have them because I feel sorry for you. Of course, iron is trying to fool copper into taking its two electrons. Okay, copper looks at the iron and goes, no, I am happy. 
and I do not want your two electrons. Well, this makes iron very mad because iron is desperate to get rid of those two electrons. It is extremely frustrated. So it goes and consults the activity series. And then notice that it, iron, is higher up on the activity series than copper. So what happens? It has the ability to take those two electrons and force copper to absorb them. So that on the other side, you have a very unhappy copper and a very happy iron. Because iron is higher up on the activity series, it can force something below it to absorb the electrons that it does not want. All right, different situation. Copper happy copper, copper that has lost two electrons, comes in contact with angry, unhappy silver. And silver goes up to copper and says, hey, I've got this electron. I want to get rid of it. I'd love for you to have it. Copper goes, no, thank you. I'm happy. I do not want your electron. Okay? So, silver goes, um, no, really, you do want my electron. Copper goes, nope. Silver goes, you will take my electron. Copper goes, no. So silver goes over to the metal activity series and notices that it is below copper on the activity series and realizes that there's nothing that he can do about it. So he must accept the fact that he is stuck with that electron until he can find a metal that is below it, something like gold. So, getting back to the question, what happens when an elemental metal comes in contact with a different metal that has become a cation? The metal that is higher on the chart will give electrons to the metal that is lower on the chart. All right, so what happens if an elemental metal is below that of the chart? Well, here we go. I believe that we have in our example copper plus two, and it's happy. It has lost its electrons. Metals want to lose electrons. That's what they want in life. And along comes silver. Silver has no charge. That means it has all its electrons. It is unhappy because it has all its electrons. And it doesn't want to have all its electrons. It wants to give up its electron. So it scopes out copper and wonders whether he can give his electrons to copper. Now before he starts the fight, he checks on the activity series to see whether he's man enough to take on copper. And when he checks his activity series, Kelsey, what does he find? He finds that he is above or below copper. Silver is above or below copper? Below. below copper. That means that he's not man enough to take on copper. So does he even try? No. No reaction. No reaction. Nothing happens. All right. On the other side of the chart, you're going to find four of the most common nonmetals. Same situation, only opposite. Metals want to give electrons. Non-metals want to take electrons. They want electrons. They want more electrons. Over here, you have bromine minus. The minus means that it has gained electrons. 
it's happy. When they become negative, nonmetals become happy. It comes in contact with fluorine, which in its natural state always has a two beside it. It's a Siamese twin. It's a diatomic molecule. Okay, it is unhappy because she does not have any extra electrons. She wants electrons. So, what happens? Fluorine looks at bromine and notices that she has extra electrons. The electrons that she wants. So, fluorine thinks long and hard and consults the activity series. Is fluorine bad enough to defeat bromine and take away her electrons? Yes, she is. She's higher up on the chart. So what happens is on the other side, now bromine, and bromine is one of those diatomics as well, is unhappy. And fluorine is very happy very happy the nonmetal is higher if the nonmetal is higher on the chart it will take electrons from the one that is lower the complete opposite if the metal is higher on the chart it will give electrons to one that is lower all right let me erase all this Last situation. Wow, why can't okay. Last situation. What happens if the elemental nonmetal is lower on the chart than the ion? Okay? So here we go. Chlorine will make believe that's Gracie. And is Gracie happy? Yes. Oh yes, she's very happy because she has gained electrons. Okay? Let me rewrite Gracie a little bit. I'm going to put her with a guy. She gains electrons from the guy. Okay, NaCl. And along comes iodine. And iodine is very unhappy because iodine has all her electrons and she wants more. She's jealous of Gracie because Gracie has electrons. So she's thinking to herself, if I can beat up Gracie, I can take her electrons and then I can be happy. Then I can flirt with sodium. So before she does it, because she's pretty smart, Nicole comes over here and she consults the activity series. And what do we find about Gracie and Nicole? Should Nicole, should Nicole pull the trigger and try to beat up Gracie? No. no. Nicole is lower on the activity chart than Gracie. What does that mean? Every time Gracie will pummel Nicole. So, no reaction. No reaction. All right. So, with these, it's always the same case. A guy goes over and tries to butt in with a couple. Or a girl comes in and tries to butt in with a couple. So what I want you to do with these things is if it's a metal, put a circle around it. If it's a metal, put a circle around it. If it's a non-metal or a group of non-metals, put a square. The fight is always between the same shapes. If you're the shape, if you're the circle that's bonded to something else, then you're happy. You've done your thing. You've given up your electron. The one that's alone is the one that's going to try to fight you. So, Ben, if Silver is dating Haley, and you check out and you want to be there. But in order to be there, you're going to have to become a positive ion. You're going to have to lose your electrons. Are you man enough to take on silver? Yes. yes. So you would say reaction. 
reaction. All right. Emmy, iodine, circle or square? Are you unhappy or happy? Unhappy. unhappy that's right. Sodium, circle or square? Is sodium a metal or a non-metal? Check it out. Find sodium. Far left, my dear. N-A. Far left. Thank you. So, circle or square? Circle. Happy? Yes. Flooring, circle or square? So who's the battle between? And is iodine woman enough to take away fluorine's electron that it has gained from sodium? Is she? Very low on the activity series. Can't do it. Actually, iodine can't do anything. So, no reaction. Iodine is the ultimate patsy. Can never win a battle. All right, continuing on. Spencer, no copper, circle or square? Uh, we're squaring the nonmetals and circling the metals, so which one is it? Circle. Happy or not happy? Actually, if it's in its natural state, if it's by itself, it's not happy. It wants to have, it wants to give away electrons. Zinc, circle or square? Happy or not happy? Okay, if it's with somebody, it's happy. It's done its thing. Chlorine, circle or square? All right, who's the battle between? Okay, can copper give zinc its electrons? The higher you up, the stronger, the better the fighter. The better you're going to give, the, the better ability to give away electrons. So the answer is no reaction. All right, back to the other side. Jackson, circle or square for fluorine? Fluorine is a, which one? Okay, fluorine is a square. Square, nonmetals are square. Happy or not happy? Because it's by itself. Potassium circle or square? Happy or, circle. happy or not happy? Happy. Happy. Iodine circle or square? square. Non-metal. Happy or not happy? happy? Okay, so you have an unhappy fluorine and a very happy iodine. Can fluorine do anything about that happiness? Is fluorine higher up on the activity series than iodine? Look on the activity series. Yes, it is. Reaction. Iodine is never going to win a battle. Magnesium, back to this side. Asher, circle or square? Happy or not happy? not happy? Not happy. Copper, circle, or square? Circle. Happy or not happy? happy? Happy. Fluorine, circle or square? Yes. Happy or not happy? Yes, happy? Okay, who's the battle going to be between? Magnesium and copper. magnesium and copper. And is magnesium powerful enough to make copper unhappy? All right. All right, the two targets I like to cover now are 2B3, I can distinguish between oxidation and reduction, and 2B4, if given a chemical reaction, I can tell which species is oxidized, which species is reduced. All right, number nine. How can you make copper plus two ions 
into copper solid. How can you make copper plus 2 into copper 0? What is up with copper plus 2? Copper plus 2 is happy. What do all electron what do all metals want in life? To give away how many electrons did copper plus 2 give away? Gave away 2 electrons. Okay? How would you make it go to copper zero? If you give it the two electrons back, it's gone back to copper zero. Give it two electrons is the answer. If it's plus two, you've got to give it two negatives. What are negatives? Electrons. What do we call a chemical change that involves the gaining of negative things? It is called reduction. Reduction. Why is it called reduction? Well, look at what's happening to the charge of copper plus 2. What's happening to the charge of plus 2? Bailey? Well, it's not just going away. It is going from plus 2 to 0. Its charge is going down. The reason why charges go down is because you're gaining negative electrons. You're gaining negative electrons. So when you gain electrons, you are reduced. You are reduced. Why reduction? Because the charge is reduced. You are adding negative electrons. Where do these electrons come from? Somebody. Somebody's going to have, they're just not floating around. Somebody is going to have to give you electrons. Okay? If you're a metal, somebody bigger and badder gave you the electrons. If you're a non-metal, somebody took it. Because non-metals want electrons. So that's why most metals would like to get along with non-metals. Because they want to take the electrons from you. They want the electrons. Most metals are going to want to shy away other metals because if they're bigger and badder, they'll give you their electrons. What do we call a chemical change that involves the losing of electrons? So if gaining electrons is reduction, losing electrons would be... Adduction. Ad you would think that something like adduction would be it, wouldn't you? Oxidation. Actually, it's called oxi oxidation. I, I like to call it increasification. Oxidation, and the reason it's called oxidation comes from the fact that the first metals that they discovered that could do this were always reacting with oxygen. So magnesium reacting with oxygen was called oxidation. So if you reacted with oxygen, it was called oxidation. Unfortunately for us, we discovered that any element could do this. But the name was already stuck because the first element that we discovered that could do this, that could take electrons, was oxygen. We called it oxidation. So the name stuck. Even though anybody can take electrons, the name is stuck. So that's why I call it increasification. So if I made that up. So if your charge goes up, you have been increasified. Yes? You'll get it wrong. It's called oxidation. But in my mind, I call it increasification because it helps me remember it's the opposite of reduction. If your charge goes down, you were reduced. If your charge goes up, you were increasified or oxidized. then you'll get it wrong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, increasification is a totally made-up word to help you remember that what oxidation really is. So, if your charge 
goes down, then we say that you were reduced. If your charge goes up, then we say that you were increasified, but that's not the right word, oxidized. Yes, because it's wrong. It's not the right term. It makes sense. It makes sense, but it's not the right term. Can oxidation or reduction happen by itself? No. If somebody gains, somebody has to lose. There's a loser and there's a gainer. Now, in football tonight, it is possible that we can tie. More likely than not, there's going to be a giver and a taker. We will win and they will lose. What do we call these reactions? We call them reduction oxidation or redox for short. Yes, redox is real. Increasification is the only word that I made up okay. because it makes more sense than oxidation. It's funner to say, harder to remember. Okay, Nicole is half Hispanic and you're like making fun of her, so that's like racism. <laughs> What do we call the reactant that gives electrons? Now, this should make sense to you. If I come over and give you electrons, Gracie, what have I done to you? So your charge went down, so what did I do to you? I reduced or oxidized you. I reduced you. Okay, what kind of agent am I if I just reduced her? What kind of agent am I if I reduced her? A happy one. I am a Oxidator. reducing agent. Oh, well, if I reduced her, that makes me into a reducing agent. Okay? If she comes around and takes my electron, take my electron, okay, what did she do to me? What happened to my charge if I lost two negative things? My charge went up. My charge went up. So I was not reduced. I was the opposite. I was oxidized. What kind of agent is she if she oxidized me? Oxidizing agent. Yes. Because you do. It, that is what it's called. An agent. Okay, folks, once again, the only word I made up, and I may never use it again because you guys are not <laughs> responding very well, is the word increasification. Why? Because increasification reminds me that the charge is going up. That's the only word. Everything else is standard chemistry talk. <laughs> All right. Let's take a visual inspection as to what we've been talking about. If you lose your electrons, you can dissolve in water because you become a positive ion. You are oxidized. You are increasified. Your charge goes up. As long as you are a negative or a positive ion, you can dissolve in water. So I'm going to show you a video of silver and nitrate dissolved in water so you can see what that means. Okay, so there's a lot of water molecules. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, right there, right, 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 right there. That is a nitrate ion. Notice it's, it's not reacting with water. It's just kind of attached to water. That's a physical reaction. Okay, all you really did, it, they were together, now they're apart, eventually they can come back together. That's just a physical reaction. Let's see if we can find silver somewhere. Oh, there, there's silver. There! That's silver. The little guy, little gray guy, that's silver. That is silver that has been oxidized. 
It is silver ion. It is silver plus one. It's happy silver. That silver is happy. Because it's happy. Okay, it is happy. Let me show you a bunch of really grumpy atoms. This is copper, and it's really grumpy. Why? Because notice the little white cloud around it. The white cloud refers to the outer shell electrons. It has all its electrons. And you know that metals don't like those outer shell electrons. Metals want to be oxidized. Metals want to lose those electrons. So, watch. Oh, do you hear them cussing? Oh my gosh. They're unhappy. They are very unhappy. They're just vibrating so mad that they are unhappy. Okay, so those are unhappy copper atoms. Now, question. So what's going to happen when unhappy copper metals who have a zero charge come in contact with happy silver? Let's see. Get on the activity series. Can copper give its electrons to silver? They can. So, if silver is happy and it meets up with copper, which is unhappy, is copper man enough yes. to react? Oh, yeah. 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 It is. So, copper becomes plus one and silver becomes zero. So copper is now happy. Silver is now unhappy. Now, what happened to silver? Silver's charge went from plus one to zero. What happens to its charge? Its charge was reduced. Okay. What happened to copper's charge if it goes from zero to plus one? Increasification. Increasification. Okay, folks, let's review this. You know that when you're in public and somebody stubs your toe, all sorts of naughty words come into your mind, but you don't say them. You shield yourself. You protect yourself. You say something like, Dad, gum it. Brownies. My whoopity doopity. My wife says bad word, which is bad word, but it's an acceptable bad word to say bad word. Okay. Now, think of oxidation as the acceptable term. Now, increasification works for us, doesn't it? Because it reminds us that the charge is going up. It is being increased. Okay, that makes sense. Oxidation does not make any sense. Nevertheless, if you go up to Eddie and go, well, that's, that metal was increasified, he'll look at you and whack you with his ruler and laugh. <laughs> Why? Because you might as well just have cussed in his presence. It is meaningless. It is meaningless. What terms should you have used instead of increasification? Oxidize. So, when you are in polite company, you have to use the word oxidation. Oxidation. Remember what happened. What happened is 120 years ago, they were experimenting with this stuff, and they realized that oxygen was reacting with these metals and was taking away their electrons. So, scientists said, well, the metals are being oxidized. And then a few years later, some nerdy little guy said, um, excuse me, I was able to make this work with sulfur. How can we call it oxidation if it works with sulfur? And most scientists said, too bad. We've already used the word. It's done. Oxidation. It has nothing to do with oxidation. Too bad. Oxidation. But phosphorus does it too. Oxidation. 
Arsenic does it. Oxidation. Oxygen. So it's stuck. It's stuck. Oxidation is the term that we use for this. So we say this was oxidized. Now, if this guy was reduced by taking electrons, what kind of agent was he? If he's a reducing agent, he must have reduced this guy, but this guy was oxidized. This is the way I remember it. Opposite agent. So, if you were reduced, you are the opposite agent. You are the oxidizing agent. You oxidize, you cause this guy to be oxidized by taking its electron. Copper did what to silver? Reduced, reduced it, making it the reducing agent. reducing agent. All right, let's watch it happen. Now remember, when you get reduced, you go into your natural state. So you're no longer moving around with water. When you get oxidized, you can now dissolve in water. So let's see what happens when grumpy copper meets up with happy silver. Silver is going to be gray. I am copper. I am grumpy. Hey, come over here, silver. Come here. Oh, what's going on? Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, here. Take my electron. Oh, no. I have been reduced. Yay. I'm happy now. Do you see the, ha oh, do you see the happy, happy copper? Come here. Come here, silver. Come here. I've got something for you. Come here. No, no, no. Oh, I've been reduced. No, no. Oh, I've been reduced. Oh, we've all been reduced. Terrible, terrible. Oh, oh, I was oxidized. You see that guy being oxidized over there? Yeah. Look at all these. Oh, oh, I was oxidized. I'm being, oh, yes, I'm being oxidized. Yay. All right, so the gray are the ones that were reduced. And the yellow, the ones that took off, were the ones that were oxidized. I mean, that was, wow, that was extremely violent, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, here is the same situation. Here's grumpy, grumpy copper. Happy zinc. Grumpy copper. Happy zinc. What's going to happen? Nothing. Let's see. Come here, Zinc. Uh, uh, excuse me. No, thank you. No, thank you. We don't need no electrons. Okay, that's basically Zinc is a big Pink Floyd fan, and they sing, We Don't Need No Electrons. Okay, you've never heard that song before. We don't need no education. <laughs> They're English guys, so they had, uh, we don't need no education. Believe it or not, I was in middle school when that song came out. That's how old I am. Uh, I mean, okay, you need to understand, I was in middle school when MTV came out. I know. <laughs> what do we use? What word do we use to refer to atoms and ions at the same time? Instead of saying, well, it can be either become an atom or an ion, okay, if we want to refer to both at the same time, we use the word species. And I know that species means something else in biology, but we probably used the word before the biologists did, so too bad. Can covalent compounds like polyatomic ions, can they be oxidized or reduced? Actually, yes. The glucose, when glucose reacts in your cells to burn, it, they are actually oxidized. Now, it's far more complex, okay? I just want to touch, I, I am going to set the stage. I'm going to teach you the nuts and bolts so that later on, if you take chemistry with Eddie or if you take chemistry in college, uh, you will have the nuts and bolts in order to understand more complex stuff. 
Okay, what term do we use to refer to these imaginary charges? We use the word oxidation number. Oxidation number and charge are usually considered to be synonymous. Except that charge is usually real and oxidation number is usually imaginary and it's just used to help us understand who's being oxidized and reduced, which is what we're going to learn on Monday. Monday I'll give you different equations and you tell me who's oxidized and who's reduced. Okay, what elements can we count on to, o and what elements can we not count on? In other words, in order to predict the oxidation numbers on things, we need to know some basic rules. Here they are. Number one, any element in its natural state has a charge of zero. Oxygen, 99% of the time, is negative 2, except when you see it as peroxide, in which case it's negative 1. Hydrogen, 90%, I know it says 99%, I'd say 90% of the time, hydrogen is plus 1. Sometimes you'll see it bonded to a metal, in that case it's minus 1. Alkali, first column, and alkaline, second column, are plus 1 and plus 2. In other words, if it's in its normal spot, if it's in a spot that we know its charge, that's its charge. I'm not a particularly picky eater. Well, my wife would disagree with you. But I really, most foods, there's only two kinds of foods for me. Sandwiches and pizza. Okay? If you think of sandwiches and pizza, where a hamburger is a sandwich and a hot dog is a sandwich. So basically, if you have two pieces of bread and meat, then you have a meal. Okay? I'll even accept steak if you give me some bread okay so two pieces of bread and meat is a meal or meat on top of bread is a meal pizza okay who's like me those are the only really those are the two food groups sandwiches and pizza pasta eh. as long as there's a sandwich and meat with it i'll tolerate pasta okay so Look over here. Well, I'll draw it here for the people who are on the internet. So, let's review. Pizza is a bread. It's Chicago style. And then, sandwich is bread, bread with meat. Okay? Anything whose, uh, whose charge you know, I consider it to be a piece of bread. The meat is what you're trying to figure out. So there's two kinds of meals, sandwich and pizza. Let's go through number 24. Let me show you how to do this. N-A-3-P-O-4. And P is in italics, right? That means that's your meat. So that means you've got bread, meat, bread. What kind of problem is this? Sandwich. Sandwich. Okay. If it is a compound and you don't see a charge here, that means its charge is zero. Everything has worked together in order to cancel out all the charges. So, we're going to set up an equation and it's going to equal zero. So sandwiches are always equal zero. Sandwiches always equal zero. All right, so let's bring down our meat. Our meat is going to become X. Bread. First piece of bread is sodium. What is the charge on bread? On sodium. 
plus 1. So 3 times plus 1 is? All right. The other piece of bread is oxygen. What is the charge on oxygen? Okay, Jeffrey, the only one that has their periodic, ta his periodic table that. out I'm and the one who said is that. monitored. What? I'm the one who said uh, you're the one who answered. Sorry. So, 4 times minus 2 is? Negative 8. Negative 8. All right, maybe you can do something that simple in your mind. Maybe you can't. I wasn't the best okay. math student around. So, plus 3, plus three minus 8 is? Negative 5 equals 0. Get the 5 to the other side. It becomes? So what is the oxidation number for phosphorus? Plus 5. Any questions? That's it. I mean, is it hard? Is it easy? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Let's do another one. K, 2, H, C, O, 3. Okay, so who is in italics? That's our X. Sandwich or pizza? Sandwich, so it equals zero. Everything else is going to have its normal charge. Charge on potassium, somebody besides Asher and Jeff. Plus one, thank you, Bailey. So two times plus one is? Bailey? Plus two. Plus, hydrogen's charge is? One times plus one is? Plus, X, plus. Oxygen's charge, 99% of the time it is? Three times negative two? when it's the polyatomic ion peroxide oh, okay. because both of them must have negative one in order to equal negative two. All right, so two plus one is plus three plus x plus negative six equals zero. All right, so x is e x minus three equals zero, x equals Plus three. That is the oxidation number for carbon. No. That's what makes it oxidation numbers. It can be anything it needs to be. Okay, this is perhaps as hard as these things get. All right. Who's in italics? So that's your X, but what's so special about the X this time? There's two X's, so you have to put two X. Okay, that's what makes that one hard. Can you handle it? Yeah. Okay. Bread, charge on sodium is? Two times plus one is? Charge on oxygen? Three times negative two negative equals two minus six is minus four. Two x plus four x equals plus two. We good so far? Pizza! Why? Well, it's N in italics, O, negative 3. Now, what is the charge? Sandwiches always equal 0. But pizzas will equal whatever charge is given to you. So in this case, the whole thing has to equal negative 1. How many X's do we have? One. Three times negative two. So x minus six equals negative one. 
what is your x? Plus 6, plus 6, x equals plus 5. Hopefully most of you guys can do this in your head. But if you need the algebra, there's the algebra. You're welcome, whoa man. PO3, negative 3. All right. Um, sandwich or pizza? That means it has to equal negative 3. Okay. Oxygen, 3 times negative 2 is? So what must it be? Plus 2. Let's see. Plus 6 plus 6. So x is equal to plus 6 minus 3. Some of you may need to spend some time with your algebra teacher.